إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد After years of persecution and suffering in Mecca the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrates to Medina here he established a new state and has some leverage and some power and some authority and so he starts sending missions out of Medina to check on Quraysh to check on their caravans and even at times he would give instructions to the companions to raid some of the caravans of Quraysh. In one particular incident, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sends Abdullah ibn Jahsh radiallahu anhu on a reconnaissance mission deep in enemy territory, close to Mecca. And as his men reach there, and they come across this caravan, they find that the caravan is lightly guarded, and so they decide to attack it. They attack the caravan, but they end up killing one of the guards, and they take the rest as prisoners, and the entire caravan is in their hands, and now they come back to Medina. However, they didn't realize the mistake that they had made. The day in which they did this was the last day of the month of Rajab, one of the sacred months in which no bloodshed, no fighting is allowed. This was a red line in the eyes of the Arabs. And later on, even Islam affirmed this, that there are four months of the year which are sacred. You're not allowed to fight, you're not allowed to kill. And so, when Quraysh found out about what had happened, they jumped on it. And they took advantage of the situation and they started to spread the news that Muhammad and his followers have violated the sacred months. They're shedding blood. They're taking hostages. They're stealing our wealth. All in one of the prohibited times. And so when these Muslims returned to Medina, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he wasn't happy. And so he asked them, he said, I didn't tell you to fight at this time. The companions also, they started to reprimand these Muslims. 
saying, what have you done? And so, these companions were in a very, very difficult situation. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from above the seven heavens, He clears the fog and the confusion, and He reveals this ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ قِتَالٍ فِيهِ They ask you, O oh Muhammad, about these sacred months and fighting therein. قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ Say, O oh Muhammad, yes. Fighting and killing in this month is huge. It's problematic. It's a sin. وَصَدٌ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ وَالْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ Allah says yes. However, avoiding people from the deen of Allah and disbelief in Allah and averting, preventing people from access to Al-Masjid Al-Haram. And expelling people from their homes. Expelling the Muslims of Mecca. Forcing them out of their homes until they had to migrate to Medina. Allah says, all of that combined is far worse in the sight of Allah. And al-fitna is worse than fighting. Fitna here refers to what the mushrikun of Mecca were doing for the last 13 years in Mecca, preventing the Muslims from practicing their deen. And so here, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts things into perspective. Yes, what this group of Muslims did was wrong. But then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take a look at what Quraysh have been doing all along. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want the Muslims to make a big deal out of what these men had done and forget about the bigger picture. And so my dear brothers and sisters, let us not be gullible. Let us not be naive, believing in everything that the unjust and biased media out there has to tell us. And so, what we should say is, they ask you about taking hostages and killing. See, worse than that is the decades of illegal invasion and occupation the killing, the indiscriminate killing and imprisoning of men, women, and children laying siege to the point where the essentials of life are prevented from millions of people. See, that is far worse than what you're claiming. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as the events unfold before us in Palestine, it's time for us Muslims to clear the air. What has happened is not as a result of anti-Semitism or some random acts of terrorism like the media wants us to believe, but rather it's the result of decades of violent Palestinian dehumanization. When Palestinian children and innocent Muslims are murdered by Israeli forces, what do they say? They say that these people were being used as human shields. That is what you call justifying violence and murder. When Israeli jets 
bomb entire buildings with its residents in there killing women and children and innocent civilians. What do they say? They say they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. That is what you call justifying violence and murder. And so Israel has been justifying its violence and its murder against Palestinians. Not for a year, two years, three years, but for the last 75 years. And so it's not just them, but their allies as well. Spreading this misinformation and this propaganda until we have arrived at the current situation where we are. What is happening right now in Gaza? By now, two to three thousand people have been killed, five thousand have been injured. 270,000 people have been internally displaced, meaning they no longer have any homes. They have nowhere to go. And these numbers are only the early figures. These numbers are only as of today. In the coming days, in the coming weeks, who knows, perhaps in the coming months, these numbers are going to multiply not just in the doubles, but in the triples. Hospitals are currently on the brink of collapse. As the Israelis have shut off electricity, water, and aid, and 300,000 troops are on the border ready for a ground invasion. Not only that, but the weapons that they have been using are weapons of mass destruction that are considered illegal weapons according to international law. Add to all of this the 15 years of living under siege of a population that is not a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand or even in the hundreds of thousands but more than two million living in an open air prison my dear brothers and sisters this is the reality of the situation currently taking place on the ground this is what you will see in mainstream media and this is a narrative that we Muslims need to show and change. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu ma tasma'oon. Wa astaghfiru allaha li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-Muslimin min kulli dhambi mukhati'ah. Fastaghfiruuhu innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في سبيله حق جهاده فجزاه الله خير ما جزى نبيا من أنبيائه صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله حق التقوى وراقبوه في السر والنجوى يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون my dear brothers and sisters, 
the events of the last several days have taught us many lessons. Among these lessons is, first of all, that in trying times like these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings out the true colors of people. In the very beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how there are three camps, three different groups of people. The believers, the kuffar, and then those in between, the munafiqun, the hypocrites. And so as for the kuffar, what does Allah tell us about them? Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu لا تتخذ اليهود والنصارى أولياء بعضهم أولياء بعض and we believe don't take the Jews and the Christians as allies as protectors why? because they are allies one for the other many Muslims for many years were deluded they used to think that some of these kuffar are with us And so today they have shown their true colors. Not a single one of them has stood by the Palestinians today. When they want votes from us, they come to us. And we being gullible and naive, we give them the votes. But not a single one of them is standing with the Muslims today. But rather, the complete opposite. They're standing for the aggression, the tyranny, and the terror unleashed by the Israeli army. How about the munafiqun? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَدَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَمُوزَ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ Allah would not allow, Allah would not allow you believers to remain upon the good that you are presently in until until he filters out the ranks, until he distinguishes the good from the evil. On the day of Uhud, when the Muslims went out with their army to meet their enemy, the hypocrites, they showed their true colors. And so they withdrew an entire one third of the army went back to Medina and they were the munafiqun and so their, their colors are also coming out today those who claim to be Muslims and they claim to always champion Muslim causes where are they today? they have taken the side of their enemy how about the mu'minun, the believers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً that the believers are brothers and what do brothers do? they have each other's backs the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَرَحُمِهِمْ وَتَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَى عُبْوًا تَدَاعَى لَهُ سَائِرَ جَسَدِهِ بِالسَّهَرِ وَالْحُنَّةِ the believers are like a body. If one part of the body feels pain and undergoes suffering, the rest of the body responds. It becomes weak. And it has a fever. And so the Muslim Ummah is like one body. If one part of it is aching and suffering, the rest, they feel that pain and that suffering. And so if you don't find that pain and that suffering, when you see what's happening to your brothers and sisters, it means one of two things. It means either you are not part of this ummah, and so you need to check your iman. Perhaps you are in one of the other two camps that we spoke about. Or it means that you are drunk. Just like if you were to go for surgery, they will drug you so that you don't feel the pain. Perhaps you're drugged. 
what is that drug? The dunya that you are constantly chasing after. And so you don't find any room in your heart for the pain and the suffering of your Muslim brothers and sisters. Why? Because your heart is attached to this dunya. Secondly, the current conflict unfolding in Palestine, one thing that we have to realize is that this conflict since day one has been an Islamic conflict and not an Arab or Palestinian conflict. And so our enemies, they divide us into nations and states along nationalistic lines, along ethnic lines. Because they know that if you divide them, you'll easily be able to conquer them. And we have all seen what Arab nationalism has done for Palestine. 75 years of failure. Wherever Muslims are attacked and under oppression, it is a Muslim cause. But what makes this even more special than any other Muslim cause around the world is the land. We stand by our brothers and sisters wherever they are suffering. Whether it be in Afghanistan, whether it be in Syria, whether it be in Kashmir, whether it be in India, wherever it is. But we have to stand up even more so for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Why? Because this land is different than those other places. This is where we have the third most sacred place for us Muslims, Al-Masr al-Aqsa. Those who are standing there, they are the ones who are defending it for us. This is the place that was the first Qibla of the Muslims. This is the place that was the birthplace of many prophets and messengers. And this was the place that our beloved Prophet wasallam journeyed to on that night and led the prophets and the messengers in Salah. And from there, he went up on that miraculous journey. Thirdly, let us also remember that betrayal has its consequences. Betrayal has its consequences. The Prophet says, ما من امرئ يخذل إن رأى المسلم في موضع تنتهك فيه حرمته وينتقص فيه من عرضه إلا خذله الله في موطن يحب فيه نصرته That there is no Muslim who betrays his fellow Muslim at a time when his honor is being tarnished except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will betray him at a time when he wishes for support and help. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَمَا مِنْ إِمْرِئٍ يُنْصُرُ مُسْلِمًا فِي مَوْضِعٍ يُنْتَقَصُ فِيهِ مِنْ عِرْضِهِ وَيُنْتَهَكُ فِيهِ مِنْ حُرْمَتِهِ إِلَّا نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي مَوْطِنٍ يُحِبُّ نُصْرَتُهُ That there is no Muslim who comes to the aid of his believing brother or sister at a time when his own honor is being tarnished except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to his aid at a time when he wants it and he's expecting it and so our brothers and sisters who have lost their lives there's no worry over them the plight of our brothers and sisters in Gaza today however tremendous it is However tremendous their suffering is, it is not worse than the suffering that the traitors will go through. And so their days are numbered.
The sunnah of Allah is that those who suffer, whatever calamity they suffer through, if they are believers, it is far lighter than the suffering that the traitors are going to go through when their day comes. And so, the question is, what can we do to help our brothers and sisters in Gaza today? How can we support them? How can we alleviate their suffering? First of all, each and every single one of us has a responsibility before Allah. And the reason for this suffering that we are witnessing today goes back to each and every single one of us. And that is us having failed in our commitment to Allah in the deen of Allah. Whatever suffering we see today is a result of us as an ummah becoming distanced from the commandments of Allah from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the only way that this suffering will come to an end is when we collectively turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it starts with me and you before anyone else. Turn to Allah. Every single bullet that is going through a Muslim child, or woman, or innocent civilian in Gaza, perhaps it's because of a sin that we commit without realizing it. Secondly, we all have weapons in our hands. In fact, it is the most powerful weapon on the face of this earth, if only we realize it. And that is, the weapon of dua. The Prophet وسلم, whenever Muslims were attacked by an enemy, whenever they were suffering anywhere in the world, the Prophet وسلم, he would make it a point in the salah, not outside of salah, but in the salah, in each of the five salawat, he would make dua al qulut asking Allah to alleviate their suffering, to protect them, and asking Allah to bring down His curse and His destruction on the enemy. Thirdly, our brothers and sisters in Gaza today are in need of essential aid. And so, although they're under siege currently. And all of the border crossings have been shut where they're not even allowing essential aid to reach them. The pressure is on for them to open up those borders. And so we have to commit ourselves to sending whatever we can. Even if it may not reach them today, soon, very soon, it will reach them. And so they're in need and in such times, we need to be helping them. And this includes our zakat. The Prophet وسلم, allowed some of the companions to give their zakat beforehand. Don't wait for the year to come and say, I have a certain time of the year when I give my zakat. In times of need, you can bring out your zakat even before then. And we thank the administration of the ministry who have said that they will send $10,000 from whatever they have saved up from the donations of this ministry to both Gaza and Afghanistan. So please, my dear brothers and sisters, let us give whatever we can to help our brothers and sisters in need. Fourthly, each and every single one of us, we need to educate ourselves 
and also educate everyone else. And so, if the Israelis want to deceive the people with their propaganda, we need to counter that propaganda. We need to show the true history of what is going on in Palestine today. It's not something that evolved in the last couple of days or the last couple of years, but this goes back to decades and decades of oppression and tyranny. We need to educate, starting with our families and our children, and then those around us. We need to educate, we need to advocate, we need to raise our voices, reach out to the politicians and the leaders and tell them that we will tolerate their silence. Finally, in times like these, many Muslims, they fall into despair. As we have been seeing this happen repeatedly, it's not the first time. And so we begin to lose hope. We need to be optimistic. And we need to remember the words of Allah. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِلَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهُ الْأَبْصَارِ Don't think Allah is unaware of what the oppressors are doing. Rather, He is only delaying them for a day in which the eyes will be staring in horror. My dear brothers and sisters, how many times in history have we seen when the odds are against us, we come out victorious? Do you think that 75 years is long? Have you forgotten that at a time when the Muslims were in control and their empire stretched from the east to the west, that Al-Quds had fallen from their hands, not for 75 years, but for 100 years. And then it was Salah al-Din al who came and liberated it. And so why are we beginning to lose hope? كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله. The Sunnah of Allah is not based on numbers. It's not based on outward military power, but rather it is based on what is in the hearts of iman and patience. إعلم أن النصر مع الصبر وأن الفرج مع الكرب. The Prophet says to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuna, no, no, that victory only comes through the door of patience. And that relief, alleviation is only going to come through calamity. And that easiness and relief is only going to come after much difficulty. And if we look at the current situation, and we look at the decades of what has been going on, no one would have imagined decades ago that our brothers and sisters in Palestine would have held on for so long. Look at this resilience and this patience and this resistance that has reached a peak never unseen in the decades gone by even though they have no help from the international community but it was their iman, their patience, their resilience that allowed them to continue on till this day and so rest assured that victory is around the corner this is the sunnah of Allah. Now is not the time to be giving up. Those before us gave up. The traitors of the ummah, they gave up. But victory is not going to come through their hands, not through their doors, but rather 
through the doors and the feet of those who remain firm and steadfast with their evening and their patience. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, when we see the horrific images that we are seeing of our brothers and sisters, of children of babies being slain, let us not think that their lives have gone to waste. ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون Do not say of those who have died in the path of Allah Don't say that they are dead But rather they are, they are alive They are alive with a life that is far better Than my life and real life today And that's why Umar رضي الله عنه what did he say to Abu Sufyan when he was still a kafir? He said to him that we are not equal. Our dead and your dead are not the same. Our dead are in Jannah, while your dead are in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us of the story of Ashab al ukhdud Those who were thrown in the fire because they refuse to give up their deen. Allah tells us of their story in Surah Al-Buruj. How does Allah end off that story? وَذَٰلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرِ And that is the great victory. Victory is not by annihilating, uh, annihilating all of these innocent lives, not by invading land, not by shedding blood, that is not victory, but victory is staying committed with your iman and your patience until your last breath. That, my dear brothers and sisters, is the true victory. And so my, our brothers and sisters in Palestine, they have been victorious. The question is not about their victory but our victory. Are we going to be victorious? Or are we going to be among the losers? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the suffering of our brothers and sisters today in Gaza and everywhere around the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to curse the Israeli army to send his destruction upon them we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite the hearts of the Muslims around the world. Have our salli wa sallimu rahimakum Allah ala nabiyyikum Muhammad ibn Abdullah kama amarakum bidhalika rabbukum jalla fi ulah faqala ta'ala qawlan kareema inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal nabiha amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد ورد اللهم عن خلفائه الأربعة وعن سائر الصحابة أجمعين وعنا معهم برحمتك وكرمك يا أكرم أكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم اللهم نج المستضعفين من المؤمنين في غزة اللهم انصرهم اللهم انصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم احفظهم بحفظك اللهم إنهم حفاة فاحملهم وجوعاء فأطعمهم وعراة فاكسهم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم عليك بأعداء الدين اللهم عليك بدولة إسرائيل اللهم عليك بها فإنا لا تعجزك اللهم عليك به فإنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم اللهم لعنهم لعنا كبيرا ودمرهم تدميرا اللهم ثبت قلوب وأقدام المستضعفين من المؤمنين في غزة اللهم ثبت أقدامهم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار 
إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون